madness. It's the Tom Likas Show. This is Sparta. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. The final edition of Likas 101 at this special time. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session one last time. 1-800-5-800-TOM. It's 1-800-5-800-8-6-6. Um, patient Zero, take a microphone there. Put Patient Zero on the air. Patient Zero or Patient One, I forget. No, it's called Patient Zero. Okay, I mean, that's right. how I'm referred to. Right, Patient Zero. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, you know, we uh, over the years, and Like Us 101 has been on the air now for 11 years. Um, I've been teaching this class, but Like Us 101 began as a series of off the air conversations with our original screener. Starting in Boston. Yeah, actually, starting in Boston. Before I came uh, back from my exile to Boston in 1994, I was gone to Boston for 10 months, and I came back, and uh, Mike Dooley, uh, to my original screener, the guy who was there the day we launched in 1994 and our first day on 97.1 FM Talk in 1997. Uh, they like us 101 was not originally a formal class. It was a series of conversations we used to have off the air. Quite frequently, unfortunately for me. Yes, quite frequently. Uh, many of the things I have said on the air were based on conversations that Mike and I had privately. Um, I've tried not to... Um, uh, to reveal any uh, specifics about Mike and uh, Mike's issues that we discussed, but uh, certainly many of the things we've discussed are things that Mike and I discussed privately at my home. And eventually, uh, there came a day, and we were at the studio at Westwood One in Culver City, there came a day when um, it, it, we, we were having a conversation on the air about I don't know what. We were having this conversation off the air about Mike's love life, and I said, you know what? The stuff we're talking about off the air is much more interesting than the stuff we're talking about on the air. And that's kind of like the, the turning point in our show when we just headed straight in a straight upward trajectory. It was when we uh, started taking the stuff we talked about off the air and making that the show. I was truly doing everything the wrong way, spending all the money, you know. Calling too much, apparently, from what I heard. How'd that work out for you? <laughs> Not so good. <laughs> but, you know, the best thing I ever did was getting a vasectomy and making that a permanent decision. I remember you came in. Was that uh, was that ice, a bag of ice, or <laughs> frozen a, peas? A bag of had? frozen peas. It was frozen peas. <laughs> <laughs> Kept the swelling down. Oh, uh, yeah. That worked. So that at least that part worked out for I you. I did learn something there because I knew I didn't want to have kids and didn't want to have to do the Hail Mary thing, so... This way, I got that taken care of uh, permanently. Yes. So you were there. You were not only there for the first Likus One Hundred and One class in nineteen ninety eight. Uh, you were there for the the original Likus One Hundred and One, which was at my home, and that was at uh, forty seven Grove Street in Boston <laughs> on Beacon Hill. I think we were sitting down after breakfast, and uh, I was lamenting about uh, some somebody not calling me back or some some date that cost me too much, and you just kind of shook your head and said, "Let me tell you the rules." And that's how it started. And uh, it had nothing to do with trying to create a bit or trying to be a radio uh, wise guy or something. It was it was just uh, Mike was a friend and I was helping him out. Which is why it works so well for everybody else because it, it's it's reality. It's the truth. It's how it should be. Julie busted every rule. Oh, every yeah. one of them. Break. He Everyone. was the nice guy. He spent the money. He did long distance relationships. It, yeah. Anything, yeah I mean, he just did it all. <laughs> did it all wrong. Well, I remember the original Like Us 101 class wasn't even called Like Us 101. Uh, the original class I taught simply was a conversation that we had had off the air. And if I recall the story at the time, there was somebody working with us at the time way back when who I think you had um, you had blown off. It was a chick in the office who you had blown off. Uh, do you remember her? Okay. All right. You had blown her off. And I'm admitting that, nothing at this point. Oh, uh, you had blown you finish her off. this. But at one point, and finally at one point, you just said, you know what? Well, why not? Why not? Why not uh, go out with her? Oh, what's the big deal? She was new in town. She had just come here from uh, Portland. Oh, yeah. And uh, True. home of the other way, me. Uh huh. And so uh, I guess you decided to finally ask her out on a date, and she gave you what I call 
the friend speech. Uh-huh. And the friend speech is that, and you know the speech, because we've all gotten the speech at one time or another. The speech goes like this. Oh, that's so nice of you to ask, and I am so flattered, but I don't want to ruin what we have. Now, fast forward a little bit. And there was one night where I'd broken up with someone and I was feeling particularly bad about it. I called the person in question that we're speaking of. Yeah. Ended up going to a bar, getting really crap faced, and uh, had a bit of a makeout session outside the bar. Oh, look at that. So she and broke down. And I think down I bought family. half the drinks. You bought half the drinks? Yeah. Were they cheap at least? It was backstage in Culver City. <laughs> oh, the backstage. That's always a good place to go. It's not expensive. Hey, they've got karaoke and a pool table and a pretty good hamburger. And a I fireplace. Remember, and a fireplace. <laughs> and many nights after we had spent a uh, really uh, uh, debaucherous uh, afternoon doing radio at the uh, studio in Culver City, we'd roll over to the backstage. And anybody who lives in Culver City knows the backstage. It's right behind uh, Sony Studios there on Culver Boulevard. Exactly. So there was a bit of an education that was uh, picked up from all this. I did gleam some of it from uh, from listening to it all those years and all those callers. And thank you very much, Tom. I'm here to help. It's Mike Dooley. He's our original screener, and he was the original, I don't want to say guinea pig, because I've had guinea pigs, and they're nothing like Mike Dooley, but he's the orig- <laughs> he's patient zero. He's the original person who got these lectures in my home going as far back as 1992. And finally, it became a radio program, and you're listening to it right now. It's Like Us 101. I am your professor. This is our final hour of Like Us 101. So if you've got questions, this is your last chance, at least for now, to get them answered at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Gabriel on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Yeah, Tom, uh, being a a young Latino, I know uh, our culture is more prone to getting girls pregnant, getting married at a young age, and what you've done, the teachings you've done for the Latinos, people may, may say it's like radio stick, but... But I think it's pretty genuine, and you were trying to reverse, you know, all these years of of what our uh, parents have taught us and trying to put us on the right track, go to school, get education. And, hey, man, I, I appreciate it. You know, I'm, I kind of got through it, and I'm doing okay. And hopefully all the all the young guys have something else to go by, and, or hopefully you, you pop up somewhere else, maybe, uh, maybe on an AM station or something. I have no idea where I'll pop up. And by the way, you never know where I'll pop up. Uh, I'll talk about that at 5 o'clock, though. Uh, okay, well, uh, yeah, that's uh, basically what I wanted to tell you, man. Thanks from all the Latinos, man. Yeah, uh, take me out Latino style. I'll take you out Latino style, Gabriel. Here you go. Latinos, you shut up! Give them the Subway uh, $5 footlong song in Spanish. What the hell? Five, no, five, five, we must have these marks for me. I don't know what to do. There you go. That's Latino style plus. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Andrew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Andrew. Hey, Dad. How are you? Do you care? Oh, of course I care. Long time listener, second time caller. Doing great. Hey, Tom, I had a question for you. Uh, recently, I've been spending a lot of time at bars, you know, hanging out. And, uh, you know, I see these chumps tipping the bartender. You know, the hot bartenders that come around. Maybe 50, 60 bucks at the end of the night. What's the, what's the policy on Likus 101 for that? You do not tip a hot bartender. You tip a generous bartender. So, so are we talking about, you know, a reasonable tip here? I mean, I'm not saying don't tip a hot bartender. I'm just saying you don't tip them heavily. You tip them like any other bartender. So, for me, the definition of a great bartender, is, there's two things a bartender does during a tip. One, uh, they know your drink. So when you walk in, they ask if you want the usual or they have it made for you if they know you're coming. Yeah. That's one. The other is uh, they've got, uh, the, you know, a heavy hand with the alcohol. Oh, yeah. All right. But being hot, uh, that is not for tipping, okay? Uh, I'm sure they get more tips for being hot, but what's the benefit to you of tipping them? Nothing. That's right. So leave your heavy tipping for people, you know, your regular guy. I mean, one of my favorite bartenders in the world, 
Uh, and what the hell? We're going off the air tomorrow. Let me mention, okay, uh, my buddy Ernie, who is the bartender at Molly Malone's on uh, Fairfax uh, here in Los Angeles, uh, just uh, north of Wilshire Boulevard. Okay, Molly Malone's uh, has been there forever, and Ernie uh, just recently, I guess, has expanded the amount of nights he's there. One of the great bartenders in L.A., uh, I've not only tipped Ernie well over the years, I've come in to give him a little Christmas tip as well, because uh, Ernie, let's just put it this way, he's just one of the best bartenders around. Uh, but would I say he's a hot chick? No. Oh, yeah, no. See what I'm saying? Of course not. Yeah, okay. I got you. Well, thanks a lot, Tom, for the advice. Uh, now I won't be one of these losers trying to get in the girl's pants by giving her a $50 tip. Yeah, well, it never works anyway. No, it does not. Everyone's trying that, and it doesn't work. Right, Dooley? Never works. <laughs> it helps to get your wallet a little empty, though, if you want to, you know, get well, rid of your Well, that's what I'm talking about. You go to a strip club, pay $40 for a Kool-Aid, okay? You can do that, but what do you get? Nothing. Damn straight you get nothing. Gotta wait, cause I ain't spending more than forty dollars on a date. Yeah. Buy ya, but you don't buy ya. B, if she answers the cell phone, disappear. Yeah. Wanna get laid? Gotta be an oh. asshole. Spike you for a lack of with Tabasco. Hit it, quit it, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Pool. Got a knocked out, but you look in the switch. Pull a hell Mary and dump that bitch. Just one on one. Welcome to the class, son. Five eight hundred Tom. Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. It's like is one oh one on the Tom Like is show. Like is one oh one final edition of the radio program that is number one in men in the afternoon. Number one. The Tom Like is show. 1 800 500 Tom. This is the final edition of Mike's 101 coming up at 5 o'clock. I will have a statement to make and then we will take your calls, get your reactions, answer all questions once and for all. And then tomorrow, we have two hours to wrap this up with a neat little bow. So tomorrow between 3 and 5 will be the final edition of the Tom Likas show for now. Why? I'll answer that question at 5 o'clock. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Like is 101. This is your last chance. Like is 101 with Jose. Hello. Are Hello, you there? Tom? Yes. Hey, uh, my question is uh, basically what's the big fuss? What's the big deal about uh, not boning single mothers? Because they already made one mistake and some schmuck is paying for it right now. Yeah, but see, to me is to me is bottom line is if you look good, if your ass looks good, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm want to hit it. I you might want to hit, yeah, but you might end up impregnating them and then having to pay. But see, I be I be. Why are you arguing with me? If you look, if if that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. Why you're so, calling me up? I'm here to give advice. You're calling me up to argue with me about this? No. So you tell Tom. So you telling me if Halle Berry. Tells you right now, let's make love. You wouldn't make love to her. First of all, your, your, your chances of getting Halle Berry are about the same as your chances of winning the lottery this week. <laughs> That's very true. But I'm just That's saying, not going to happen. Berry. What you're going to get instead is some doughy white chick, because you live in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. Some 185-pounder who has nothing better to do than to give it up to you because she's not Halle Berry or anything like Halle Berry. And you'll take it because it's the easiest thing coming down the pike until she gets pregnant. And in Portland, uh, generally the chicks say, I don't want an abortion, I'm having your baby. And you're going to pay. And then that's the end of your life as you know it. So go ahead and do it. Live it up. That's what you're going to get. Well, I'm just saying I'm just not going to pass up on no ass. Great. You know? Then don't. one eight hundred five eight hundred. tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Randy on the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101 Final Edition. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's up? Doing okay. Good, good. Hey, um, I just want to call, um, you know, I've 
moved out here when I was 18 to L.A., and my cousin's one who got me turned on to you. And to be honest with you, at the beginning there, I fought him tooth and nail about listening to you. When I finally did, you know, it made a lot of sense. I made a lot of the mistakes you talked about, about getting with single mothers, paying for everything, always being a nice guy. And you know what? Everything you say is true about women out there. And I just hope everybody else out there listen to your show and takes it to heart. And, you know, I, I hope you come back on there. We're going to miss you, and I, if you can take me out old school. Yes, of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Oscar, you're our student here in our final edition of Like Us 101. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Oscar. How's it going over there? It's going okay. Uh, I just want to uh, give you a little success story. Uh, transformed from a nice guy to the a-hole that gets more chicks than the nice guy does. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks for... Uh, Thanks for all the advice, and I hate to see you go, but I'm pretty sure I'll end up hearing you somewhere else. Uh, can you take me out, Michael Phelps, though, with the bong hit? Michael Phelps? Well, that, that <laughs> pretty much is a bong hit, isn't it? It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Javier on the Tom Likas Show. Javier, Todd, long time, first time. Glad to be speaking with you. Thank you so much. Anyways, I had a question about uh, what would you say about um, trying to, you know, date, you have a relationship going on with a roommate sister. So you mind, it's a roommate, you're a friend, but you're also a roommate, and, uh, you know, how do you walk that thin line? Well, uh, if I were you, I would get the approval of the roommate if you're concerned about having good relations with the roommate. Simple as that, Tom? Simple as that. If the roommate has no problem with it, I have no problem with it. Yeah, me neither, but I think you might just be a little hothead, but at the same time, it might be better just not to even mess with it, right? Well, I, uh, that's always the way to go. There's plenty of other chicks out there. And, Tom, uh, and uh, d don't make your life so complicated. Make it easy. That's what I'm Tom, this is why we need you out here still. Well, you know, uh, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> Effective uh, Friday at uh, 5 o'clock tomorrow. Anyway, Tom, I wish you a lot of luck, and please take me out travel style. Here you go, Javier. Ballinga, 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 so pinza. Ballinga, 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 so pinza. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Evan on Like Us One Hundred One. Hello. Hello. Dad. Hello, son. What's cracking? Uh, somebody's ass tonight about 7 o'clock. Oh, you know it. Uh, I have a question about 18 or 19-year-old little hotties. I've gotten their numbers, but they're not calling me back after, like, three days. I'm trying to build up a bullpen, what I like to call my Pudenda agenda, but, uh, <laughs> you know, they're not calling back. Should I just leave it at one phone call and keep fishing yes, or what? Yes, yes, yes. Um, fishing for chicks is like if you ever work in a boiler room, one of these telephone uh, sales rooms. You know, nine out of ten people are going to say no. Okay, uh, and, and that's how it is with chicks. Just keep uh, right. keep keep uh, spreading your feelers out there, and eventually you start to hit some. Right on. Can I make a prediction for five o'clock? Sure. You're going to Sirius XM. Oh boy, <laughs> we've had this conversation so many times. I don't know where I'm going. That's the you know I'm under contract here, and I don't know where I'm going, and I haven't had a chance to think about it. And well, I'll, I'll discuss all of this stuff at five o'clock. Okay, hang on. Meanwhile, we're wrapping up like us one hundred and one. If you have ever had a question for your professor, this is your final opportunity here at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Lauren on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey Tom, what's up? Ah, uh, not much. What's up with you? What? Well, I got a question for you. I work for Carl Jr., and uh, it's hard to pick up the chicks. You know, I work the drive through and there's all these hot chicks coming through, and it's kind of like I'm kind of embarrassed because I work there, and these hot chicks, you know, they work somewhere in the office buildings. What would I do to, like, what do you have some advice for me? Tell them your dad owns it, uh, that franchise. Uh, but it's not franchise. I work for the corporation. Wait a minute. You don't work for the corporation if, if, the, uh, if there's a drive through you wait, you work in Carpinteria at the corporate headquarters? No, no, I work for Carl's Jr. I know. You work you work at a location where they sell hamburgers? Yeah. At a drive through window. 
Yeah. The average person doesn't know if that's a franchise or not. Tell him your dad owns that Carl's Jr. Hello? Well, that's, that's not... They, they don't go for that. They're like, oh, they How do go. you know? Have you tried it? Yeah. Oh, you have tried it. So you told women that your father owns that, that, that Carl's Jr. Well, a bunch of us, we try like, different things. They always try to say something different. Yeah, but that that's the one you have to keep getting. And by the way, as I told the last guy, there's going to be a lot of rejection. If you tried it one time, that's not enough. That needs to be the story. Well, I just keep doing that. Right. Do you know how profitable these franchises can be? Yeah, Do you know that most people money. don't just own one? They own 10 or 30 or 100 of them? Yes, sir. Well, then telling somebody that your dad owns the franchise, they don't know if it's corporately owned or if it's a franchise. You're dealing with chicks here. Yeah. And what do you think about for me going for, like, the older ones? Yeah, like I think, cougars. I, well, the cougars are easy to get, but you just better use a condom because they all want to fall in love. Yeah. All right, and what do you think about, like, um, friends, friends, cooking up with them? Friends, friends? you got to get your friends uh, approval on that. That's what I would say. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the final edition of Like Us 101. This is your last chance to check in with your professor. Tom Like Us. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Like Us Show. The Tom Like Us Show. The final edition of Like Us 101. And your professor has been number one now in Men 2554. And is so thankful to you for making us number one. Five o'clock, I will try to answer all your questions. I will have a major statement. Not a major announcement because there's no benefit in it for you, but it's uh, a statement from me to you coming up. Just 30 minutes from now on the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101. Amy is listening to the online stream in Ashkosh, Wisconsin, for God's sake. Hello. Hello? Yes? Hi, I have a question about this. these rules. Like, why does a guy need to get a paternity test? Like, no matter what, why is that? Because we don't want to pay child support to somebody who got knocked up by somebody else. But if you know that it's your kid, you, like you don't know. Yeah, but you can know. Like you can you know. Don't that your know. Wife or you your don't being, know. You don't know. No, but you can know. Yo, you can't. Why though? Not without GPS it's, tracking, you can't know. You don't know. Isn't that what trust is about? Uh, uh, forget about trust. Thirty percent of the people who get tested, DNA tested, thirty percent. The guy who thinks he's the father is not. No, Why should these that. suckers, <laughs> the statistics are out there, we've read them on the air. <laughs> Why should these suckers be paying child support for that? Well, like in those cases, yeah, but... Well, how I do just... you know if you're one of those cases until you have a DNA test? DNA test, every time uh, there's a live birth, you make sure you have a DNA test before you put your name on that birth certificate. I think it should be the law, by the way. I think you should not be able to put a man's name on a birth certificate until there's been a mandatory DNA test. I don't agree with that. What? I just don't. I don't agree with it at all. Well, sure you don't, because I'm sure you'd like to reserve the right to bang your high school sweetheart or the homecoming no, king or, or, or do whatever you want to do. I have a kid, and my son's father knows that he's his dad. He no, he doesn't. He no, he, he does. doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't know. know. That. That's what he like believes, him. but he doesn't know it. Oh well, whatever. How he doesn't know it. I. He knows. He knows. No, he doesn't. <laughs> If he looks at that kid, that kid It doesn't. Like Matt, maybe you like to bang guys who look like uh, your boyfriend. I don't know. But <laughs> I'm telling you that uh, he does not know and will not know until there's a DNA test. Whatever. Can I Can I take you out with a bong rip? So will you take me out <laughs> Bill O'Reilly style? Uh, Bill, you want me to take it out Bill O'Reilly style? I Wait. take you out with a bong rip first. Oh, I first the bong rip from you and then Bill O'Reilly style. Here you go. 
Thank you, Tom. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. And thing sucks! Ah, yes. Bill O'Reilly? Also no longer on the radio? It's one 800 800 tom Jasmine on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how are you, Tom? Hi, I'm great! Uh, I just want to say, um, I called like once a long time ago, but that was like the only time I've, I've ever called. But now I want some advice from you from a guy, like a guy, like what should I do in this situation here? Let me explain to you. Um, about a week or two ago, I had sex with this guy and he was like, I'm going to go on vacation for the next couple of days, whatever, you know, I was like, fine. And he doesn't call me until a day after Valentine's Day. And he's been calling me ever since, like, every single day. And I haven't answered because I know, like, what he's trying to do. And I don't know if I should talk to him or what. Well, but put it this way. Were you, were you expecting him to be in love with you after having sex with him once? No. I, I Actually, I didn't. Like, I didn't So don't worry about anything. Valentine's Day. What, what does Valentine's Day have to do with anything? Well, because I was thinking maybe he was thinking he was obliged to get me something just because we had sex. Like, I didn't even want anything. He probably did him. feel that way. He probably, uh, by the way, he was a fool. I would have told him not to do that. Uh-huh. So, and he didn't. He, like, he had, he's just trying to call me. He wants to hook up again and, like, Great. go out. And do you like that idea? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I really don't know. Like, for me, like, when he first called me, I, th I didn't even think he was ever going to call me again, which was fine, you know, like, he didn't quit it. Like, I'm all for that, you know? But just the fact that he did call me the day after Valentine's kind of makes me mad. Like, Why? Like, kind of like, oh, you're not mad enough to call me, like, even a couple days, you know? Like, what did you think? What kind of girl I am, you know? Like, I, I just, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, should I talk to him or just forget about did it? Like, you, did you enjoy having sex with him? Kind of. It was, it was kind of is not good enough. You didn't like it that much? He had a really small, you know. Oh, he was really well, small. There you go. Me. In that certain area. I love those commercials. In that certain area. Uh, yeah. It just, it wasn't really, it was good, but not that good. Uh, well, then, then, then definitely, if you were not satisfied, uh, not a good idea to get in touch with him again. See, now you, you have to drill down to the nub. Which, which is what that guy had, apparently. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. By the way, speaking of bad commercials, you know, as the economy continues to decline, you will notice a decline in the quality of the commercials. TV, radio, everywhere. They, the commercials are going downhill fast. And I want to talk to you about a TV commercial. You may have seen it. It's on very late at night. I cannot remember the product, but somebody has seen this. There is a product. <laughs> if you want to see how far late night TV has fallen, if you think head on applied directly to the forehead was low, you don't know how low it gets. Or Ron Jeremy doing commercials for Mail and Hasman. This is worse. I had an itchy, itchy rash. Well, we're kind of in that ballpark, but even worse. There's a product, and I know someone knows the name of the product, and we'll call in with it, to, but... It's a product, they say, for men who have an odor problem down there. <laughs> That's what they say in the commercial. This is a product for men who have an odor problem down there. This is a hard product to sell since most guys don't want to be thought of as a douche. So they had to come up with some other uh, application method. Unbelievable. Has so anybody seen this commercial? I know I'm not making this up. I know I've seen. It. Of course, I was. Uh, yeah, I was probably uh, three sheets to the wind when I saw it, so I didn't exactly like make a note of it. But I'm telling you, there's a commercial late at night. It's on one of your local cable channels. <laughs> if you've got an odor problem, gentlemen, down there. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's like us 101. Here we are, the final class. This is your chance. Raul of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, my name's Raul. I just want to tell you, long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. For a long time. My parents always told me to listen, especially my mother. <laughs> yeah, really? she loves your show. Yeah. Love that. 
Yeah, she called a couple of times. Well, I just wanted to get to the story, you know. I've been with my girlfriend for about a year and uh, five months now, but she lives all the way in Berkeley, California, and she's going to school over there. We kind of got together towards the end of high school. And right now I'm feeling kind of uneasy. I don't know what to do because, I mean, my life's just ahead of me, and she's over there. But then again, we're both so young, you know. I'm just trying to figure things out. What do you think? Well, there's no such thing, and I'm going to tell you, and I've said this so many times on Like It's 101. Have you been a student for a long time, Raul? Uh, yeah, of course. All right, there's no such thing as a long-distance relationship. Yeah, that's what everybody tells me, of course. There's no such thing. Uh, there's a, a, a friend with benefits who occasionally comes to town who you'll bang when she's in town. But if you're sitting at home on Friday night saying, well, I can't go out because I'm waiting for a phone call from my girlfriend, you're a fool. I just try to believe in a monogamous relationship, that's all. There are no monogamous... Look... Monogamy does not extend outside your zip code and maybe the adjacent zip code. And that's about as far as monogamy goes these days. Damn. Women are scandalous. You know what? I've been telling every girl that I've met the same thing. And I tell my girlfriend the exact same thing. But it sounds to me like you uh, you are disappointed. Like you thought that uh, your girl would go to Berkeley and uh, she'd just be waiting for your next phone call. Waiting for further instruction from you. Sometimes it sounds like it though. But why would you believe that? Have you ever been to Berkeley, Raul? Have you ever been there? Yes, I, I, I was just there the other day. Berkeley. I was just in Berkeley the other day. Berkeley's full of oh, these coffee oh, houses and bookstores and uh, movie theaters, these these old uh, movie theaters and stuff. And and your girl gets to that campus at UC Berkeley, and like 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 the ants coming towards the sugar bowl, like <laughs> like the shark coming towards that cut in your foot. You know what I'm saying? They're yeah. coming at your girl. Hey, uh, we, you know, we're having a kegger on Saturday. Hey, did you see that movie Milk? Uh, we're all going to see it. You want to come with Hey, we're having a happy hour. We're going to be watching Monday Night Football. Hey. Oh, I have another question. What? My what? girlfriend says she does not drink or smoke, and I have myself smoke. You know what? I've been trying to catch her on that to see if she yeah! does, but you know what? I have not caught her sleeping if she is. So if there is a good way to find out how. Stop trying to find out and start banging other chicks. <laughs> I guess that's the most direct way to put it. Huh? Just be honest with yourself. She's going to do whatever she wants. She is now a free agent. What goes on the road stays on the road. Truth. I, Face you know the truth. Because you're all right when it comes down to it. So just instead of worrying about trying to spy on her, don't be spying on her. Okay. Do your own thing. Thank you, Tom. Hey, can I, can you take me out, Kobe Styles? Snoop Dogg? There you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Bitch. It's the final edition of Like Is 101, the final segment of the final edition of Like Is 101. Your final opportunity for your question for your professor. 20 minutes from now, I have a special statement I'm going to make here on the air. Live on the air. It's just me to you. It's coming up. Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likis. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likis Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5800 Tom from Hollywood. The final edition of Likas 101. The final 15 minutes of Likas 101. And then at 5 o'clock, a special statement from me to you. I want to get it all out of the way right here at 5 o'clock. We will, and then we'll take your phone calls. We're not going to avoid it. You will get to talk to me. And don't forget, we are back tomorrow from 3 to 5. With our big send-off for 97.1 FM Talk. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Vivian on Like Us 101. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Do you care, Vivian? I actually do. I'm doing great. Awesome. I'm doing good, too. Listen, Tom, I have a problem. I've been going out with this guy for about seven, eight months. He's three years younger than I am. And... I have no complaints except for one. He's so metrosexual that people think he's from the other side of the fence. 
And when we're going out, people think he's my best friend, and males actually come up to me and ask me about him or about his situation. Now, what I need is I need to know how to man him up without offending you him. You can't. You can't? That's who he is. I know, but maybe grow. No. no, no, no. You can't change people. Maybe. Um, you have I to guess. accept him as he is or dump him. Dump him or accept him. One or the other. One or the other. Oh, maybe change the way he dresses. Again, you can't change anything about him. Nothing at all. No. I get it. Women always think they can change men. Forget it. You cannot. I know, but I just figured maybe since he says it bothers him when males hit him up, I figured he would do something about it. Well, again, that's him, between him and the people he talks to. Hmm. None of your business. I suppose you're right. So, you, I mean, you pick this guy. Uh, he certainly hasn't changed since. Right? Right. Uh, so why would you expect him to change now? Well, what incentive does he have to be more like what you want? What could he do? I'm asking, what what right do you have to expect him to change? What makes you expect that he will change? I don't know. I just figured, like I told you earlier, he says it bothers him. I, well, I, mean, that, yeah, I don't care about what people say. I care about what they do. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Well, I, um, I do see what you're saying. So if he is not the guy you want, you need to find the guy you want. But you can't they, they, stop with all, you know, they, there's a reason why we love those makeover shows on TV. <laughs> right. Because you all think you're going to take uh, a guy who's a diamond in the rough and you're going to change him into something else. And in this case, you're still right because he's going to change. Like you said, he hasn't done it yet. He's not going to do it He at is all. who he is. Right. What if he started telling you to change? What if he told you he wanted you to wear different color clothes or wanted you to uh, act differently? Right. You'd say he was controlling or a bully or, you, you know, you'd have nothing good to say about him if he did that, would you? Well, maybe if he did, I wouldn't mind because I do like the aggressive type and I would want him to. So you don't like the way you are? So you, so you don't <laughs> like the way you are? I love the way I am. I'm just saying. So I wanted... why would you agree to change if someone suggested it? Oh no, I wouldn't change. I would just want him to tell me something. Why would you want that? Because I want him to be more aggressive, man up, and take charge of himself, and not just do everything I say, except for when it comes to changing the way he dresses. But that's my point: is if you want a man who isn't man enough, if you want a man who's man enough for you, you need to go find him. Right. Perhaps you, that's you can't make him be that. You're not his mother. I know. Even if I were, he shouldn't change anyway. Right. right. Yeah, you know, he should be who he is, and there's a woman out there who will like him the way he is. And I hope he finds her soon. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you so much. Thank now, you. Can you take me out, Colby style, please? Yes, yes, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, the waning minutes now. The final edition of Like Us One Hundred One. It's Tim. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up, buddy? I'm doing okay. Right on. Just a, a quickie. Bullpen management versus the hit it and quit it. Like, how do they graduate, or how would you advance an individual to the bullpen? Well, I mean, the, the idea is, I would think of who my five or six favorites are, like your fave five. Yeah. And then I would limit it to that group. Right on. And then you just rotate through. And then now, just for whatever it's worth, when's that bullpen a little too big, or can it never be too big? Can never be too big. <laughs> can right never on. be too big. Never be too big, huh? There's no. a <laughs> right on, buddy. Hey, uh, dude, I'm gonna miss you. Uh, I'm telling you that right now. You are, you are, poppy. So, you know, well. if. If, uh, you know, basically I, I think of you as like a, a group of a men's club and it comes down to brothers and guys that get the job done and you're definitely one of them. Everyone needs a good doctor, a good lawyer, and you are like the shoulder to 
you know lean on when you need that advice so you know and uh hey if you if uh if you need any advice from me if you ever need a plumber off the air i'll give you my information <laughs> thank you for that tim you never know Does he smell good? do you smell good or do you show up on time that's the question that's right one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Oh boy, I got two minutes for a very important question. Robert on Like Us One Hundred One. Hello, Tom. I have to say that you rock wherever you go. I'm going to be a fellow following you wherever you go. Thank you. Now here's a situation. About two and a half years ago, I hooked up with my neighbor, had sex, wore a condom, like you said, do every time, and the condom broke. I pulled out real, really quick, and she had a baby. About, I don't know, maybe two years. After I have that. said on the air repeatedly, the pull-out method is a myth. No, but I had a condom on and it broke. And when it broke, that's when I pulled out. I understand. I'm just saying that the pull-out method is a myth, and I want people to know that. I see. Now, my question is, she's really cool. She said she won't say anything because if she does, it will ruin her marriage. And it's already been two years. She knows my wife. And the question is, do I proceed with a DNA test or just leave it alone? Um, I would leave it alone. Uh, obviously, if you get any uh, mail from, uh, you know, a county uh, agency or something, which could happen when she gets a divorce, she'll need money. Um, you know, I, and by the way, I would also consult with an attorney about that. Okay. I, I would definitely consult with an attorney about that. Well, look how complicated you've made your life by having sex with a married woman. Look how complicated it is, though. You're right. I learned my lesson. I will we'll most likely never do it again. Well, I recommend that people not do it, period, because uh, it, it can be very, very messy, and, and you're a good example of that. Absolutely right. Hey, Tom, will you take me out after tribal style? My kids love that when you play that. I certainly can. Students, thank you. Now I won't be here every week to remind you of the tenets of Lycus 101. It is your job to take them out into the field and to continue spreading the good word until we have another pulpit. Coming up next, a statement from me to you, straight up at 5 o'clock. It's the Tom Lycus Show.